plan that God would become man in Jesus Christ was what sparked off the rebellion in heaven. Lucifer and his rebels opposed the plan. And since then, anything that reminds them that God actually became man angers and terrifies them. That is why the Eucharist, the actual body, blood, soul and divinity of God in Jesus Christ and the highest gift God can give to man or angels is attacked furiously by Beelzebub. Desecration of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, communion in the hand, reverend sisters, seminarians, lay people whose hands have not been consecrated at any ordination, handle their God anyhow. The hands of the priest purified by the Holy Spirit at ordination are the only hands that can touch the host. That is why a priest's hands can bless. But no, Lucifer has found a way to insult God by justifying communion in any hands. His pastors have been hoodwinked to put aside the age-old tradition that only priests can touch the host. St. Augustine taught that anyone who is not a priest commits a grave mortal sin if they touch the sacred species, the host. They no longer listen to St. Thomas Aquinas who said that only priests can consecrate and distribute Holy Communion. Jesus our Lord revealed to a privileged soul that communion in the hand of a non-priest is a weapon of mass destruction. Destruction of the faith, destruction of the church, destruction of the soul. Jesus said communion in the hand of a non-priest brings instant death to the soul. So, we have many walking spiritual corpses in our churches today who think they're all right. So communion in the hand of non-priests is a weapon of mass destruction. In fact, our Lord revealed to a privileged soul that because of this desecration by priests and reverend sisters, the parishes become targets of the evil people, like armed robbers, kidnappers. Jesus said as a result of this desecration, priests will be killed anyhow. They will die in all kinds of horrible accidents. They will be kidnapped and so on. And reverend sisters will be kidnapped and raped and their convents invaded by evil people because of this desecration of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and they do not think about it as even being sinful. Reverend sisters say they are being charitable by helping priests to distribute Holy Communion. The church teaches that out of the seven sacraments the Holy Eucharist is the holiest and every action in the church tends to the glory of the Holy Eucharist. If this is so, how come Reverend Sisters cannot baptize when there's a priest? How come Reverend Sisters cannot confirm when there's a priest or a bishop? How come Reverend Sisters cannot preside over marriages or the sacrament of holy orders? Reverend Sisters can't hear confession. How come they can touch the holiest of the seven sacraments, the Holy Communion, and say they are being charitable? Reverend Sisters have not been consecrated to touch the host. In fact, the Bible says no woman should assume a position of supremacy in the church. What? other superior position can somebody have in the church than to distribute Holy Communion, the highest of the seven sacraments. So our Lord said that because of this, many souls of priests and religious are going to hell. Jesus revealed to a privileged soul not too long ago that 90% of priests who have been dying since the 18th century have been going to hell because of their treatment of the Eucharist and the violations of their law of celibacy, violations against the Sixth Commandment. In fact, this warning echoes some of what the saints in the past have said before. Saint John Christotum said that the road to hell is paved with the bones of priests and monks, 
and the skulls of bishops are the lampposts that light the path. Or, the road to hell is paved with the skulls of erring priests with bishops as their signpost. Then he went in to say, I do not think that there are many among bishops that will be saved, but many more that perish. St. John Christotum said that. St. Athenaeus said, The floor of hell is paved with the skulls of bishops. St. John Eude said, the road to hell is paved with the skulls of bishops. St. Thomas Aquinas said, It must be observed, however, that if the faith were endangered, a subject ought to rebuke his prelate even publicly. This was St. Thomas Aquinas in Summa Theologica. That means lay people have a right to bring even bishops back to the truth. In these days, they say, well, you know, once the priest and bishop have said it, you'll go to hell if you watch a priest and a bishop go into error and do not do anything to correct them or to show them that error is being perpetrated. So we need to pray for our priests and bishops. Pope St. Gregory the Great said, it is better that scandals arise than for the truth to be suppressed. So, when Jesus says that 90% of priests who have been dying since the 18th century have been going to hell because of the desecration of the Eucharist and violations of the sixth commandment, please do not doubt it. But we need to pray for our priests and bishops to stop the desecration of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. St. Leonard of Port Morris said 85% of adult Christians who die today go to hell. 85%. Yet we always say, call to glory, call to glory, while souls are languishing in hell. Beelzebub's deceit is total now among Christian ranks. Complacency in the part of the pastors and laity is sending millions of souls to hell every day. Beelzebub chuckles. <laughs>